The success of each adult pair is measured by the currency of their young, by how many are successfully raised and how quickly they develop. Capturing the owlets involves simply reaching into the hole and pulling them out. Sometimes, though, the nest cavities are a little too high to be reached by a ladder. Under a minute, Brian. Pretty nice. <laughs> You're making good time up there, Chief. We've not been in this nest yet, and this woodpecker hole is being used for the first time. So whenever that's the case, whenever I climb to such a tree, it necessarily means that I have to enlarge the hole to some extent so I can reach my hand in yeah. be able to get access to the outlets at the bottom. So that will take a few minutes. Once I get up to the, mm -hmm. climb up to the height of the hole, I'll have to pull out my folding saw and go to work for sometimes half hour, sometimes even longer to open up the entrance enough to uh, be able to reach the outlets. Need to look at the eyes on these, Scott. Okay. Once that's done, then we'll lower the owlet from the hole down to the ground where my trusty crew will do all of the banding and bleeding effort. It's gotta be a little scary for the guy. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I didn't want this. Got him. Okay. Los dos. Oh, these guys must have been staring straight up into the saw, Brian. Yeah. It's up in there, too. Uh, for the most part, yeah. Did you get a good sample of them? I didn't believe them yet. Huh? Their early life, they don't know anything other than the inside of the cavity. Their only discernment of what the outside world is is through a little light coming into in a skylight. Go, bud. Through the entire 23-day nestling period, give or take, they're completely dependent on the parents for bringing them food, and for the first seven days or so, very, very dependent on the female for being able to generate heat. <laughs> <laughs> Such species, we call them altricial species, necessarily require a great deal of parental care and often requiring the services of both the male and the female. Yeah. Measuring the owlets helps keep track of their development and blood samples are taken to determine parenthood. Surprisingly, even though most owlets are sired by the expected territorial male, a significant number are the product of what Brian calls fooling around, or extra pair copulations. Males who sneak into another male's territory in this way are called UFOs, or unidentified flammulated owls. So this guy's probably two or three days from fledging, and the easiest way to tell by looking at him is the feathers around the face. Yeah, look over here. Right around the face, they start to get <laughs> an adult facial disc. And then the way that we can tell a little more accurately is by measuring these feathers down in here on the wings. And when they get to around 60-ish, 65, that's about when they fledge. So they're pretty old. You can tell they jump off your finger sometimes and practice fledging. Okay, hey guys, my feet are wearing out here. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. After the owlets are done being processed, they are returned to the nest to be with their mother for the last few days before they fledge. It's hard not to be at least a little sad to see them go.
<laughs> On these afternoons during the nestling period, the crew will attempt to capture and process as many owlets at different nest sites as they can before dinner. At this nest, everything seems fine at first until taking a look inside. Uh, what? Seriously? Nothing. No owlets. They fledge? That doesn't make any sense. They've got to be in there. Why would she be in there? There's poop all over the place. Yeah, there's tons of poop. Well, it's possible, I suppose. They fledged last night. Guys, why don't you drop everything and let's, uh, for a few minutes, let's look around here. Watch where you step because conceivably they could be on the ground. And um, fledging typically results in individuals going, moving down slope. Okay? And I would suspect in that direction we ought to look at these, scrutinize these willows pretty carefully. How high up do you expect them? Well, they could be up to 10 or 15 feet probably. The young hear someone begging, even a fake. They can be duped into begging themselves. These outlets are adapted to remain unseen by predators during the day, and scientists are no exception. Nobody really knows how Kirsten yeah. was able to spot the shape of one silhouetted against the cloudy sky. Yeah, good eye. Man, it's been preyed upon. Oh no. Catch this, will you? Got it. I don't understand. Hmm. This bird wasn't fledged. Holy smokes. Doesn't appear to be anyway. It's a little shy. Let's take him back with us and measure it. There you go. Well, the world is a harsh place for a small clam. A harsh place indeed we cannot help but realize that it's something we all experience in some way. The dangers and the wonders that await a young owlet at the dawn of its independence. The owlets in the last three days of, the, of that period, uh, they make a initial flight that takes them in a crash bombing into the ground, uh, and after that they are through with the nest. They never come back, although they're still very much dependent on the adults for caring for them for another five or six weeks. They're only going to leave the cabin once. They're only going to fledge one time. 